Hello and welcome to Skills and Automation. My name is Ash and in this video, we will look at the various ways to delete blank or empty rows using Excel VBA. We will concentrate on two specific techniques, special cells and a reverse for loop. Each has its own merits. This is a concepts video. We are going to deep dive into a VBA concept covered in one of my previous long form YouTube videos where we looked at various scenarios while copying and pasting semi-structured data. Please check out that video if you want to see deletion of blank rows used in a real life project. Special cells is a method that returns a range object, which is a cell or a group of cells. And this is based on the parameter that we supply to that method. The parameter that we are particularly interested in is the cell type blanks parameter, which returns all the blank cells within the range that we have selected. And the range can either be the entire worksheet or a specific data range or even a column. In all these examples, we have just selected the blank cells within a specified range, but we can go ahead and delete the row in which each of those blank cells are located. All we need to do is replace the select code with entire row dot delete. Next, let's look at a few scenarios where special cells is applicable. Let's look at a few examples. In this data set, we have a few blank or empty rows in between our data set. We can use the special cells method to go ahead and delete all the rows associated with a blank cell. Let's go to our VB editor, Alt F11, create a sub, declare and assign a worksheet object variable. And now we can grab all the blank cells in the worksheet. So we'll grab the cells object and then choose the special cells method and the cell type blanks parameter. Just a note here, when we say ws.cells, we might think that these include all the cells in a worksheet, like all the ones right till the bottom of our worksheet as well. But in fact, this method only looks at the use range. Okay, so back to our code. Now that we have our blank cells, let's go ahead and delete off the rows that they are in. Great, let's run this macro, check out the results, and all the blank lines have been deleted. So this is just one line of code and it works like a charm. However, there are two important points to consider. The first is error handling. If there are no blank cells in the worksheet to begin with, then this method will throw an error. And we can factor this into our code using the on error resume next statement. So before this line of code, we'll go on error resume next. And this error handler will skip to the next line of code if the special cells method gives back an error. And if you're not ending the sub right after this line, it's always good practice to revert back to normal error handling using the go to zero statement. So let's test this with and without the error handler. Comment this out. There are no blanks in our worksheet. Okay, run the macro. And we get a runtime error saying that no cells were found. Okay, so we were expecting this. End, turn back the error handler and run the macro again. This time it ran, but it didn't throw back an error. Okay, moving on to the next issue. Now to the second point, which can be a deal breaker. A blank cell does not necessarily mean that the entire row is blank. Special cells will delete the row regardless. And this is something you may or may not want. Let's look at this worksheet. We have one row with all blank cells. So the row is entirely empty and needs to be deleted. And there is another row with just one blank cell. So the row is not entirely empty and should not be deleted. Let's run a macro over this data. Run the macro. And we can see that both rows got deleted. This is not the result that we were after. And this is something you should definitely watch out for. That is, you might unintentionally delete off rows that you did not want to delete in the first place. So when should we use special cells? Firstly, if you're absolutely sure that your data set may contain blank rows, but not necessarily blank cells within a populated row, then go ahead and use this method. It is much faster than the next alternative that we are going to look at. And secondly, if you want to delete rows within a data set based on whether a column contains blank cells or not, let's look at an example. This worksheet has timesheet data or work clocked in by a contractor. 
Suppose our business rule is that if the contractor does not provide a client ID, then the job is not valid and we will delete off the rows. So if any value in column D is blank, like these ones right here, we should delete off the rows. Let's come back to our macro. So this time we'll use the columns object. We can use either the column alphabet reference or its column index number to refer to the column. So column D is column four. So we can either go four like this or D. Let's run the macro. Great. All the rows with blank client IDs have been deleted. And for the very last caveat, before we move on, special cells will not work on cells with formulas which return a blank value. Let's look at this example. The last column out here returns a Y if the hours in the column F is greater than four hours and blank if it is not. Let's run a macro over this last row. And we're gonna run over column G. Let's run the macro. Come back to Excel, nothing happened. We will need to use the next technique, which is the reverse for loop in this case. And that's all you need to know about deleting rows using special cells. It's fast, but there are some caveats as well. Moving on to my preferred way of deleting blank rows, the reverse for loop. The most common way to loop over a data set is by starting from the top and moving towards the bottom. But when deleting rows, we need to start from the bottom and move towards the top. Why? Let's try and delete a row in Excel and see what happens. So notice out here, there are two consecutive blank rows. Let's delete row number four and just watch for what actually happens to the below data set. So we're deleting row number four, right click, delete. The below data set just moved up. That is the line that was previously row number five is now row number four. If you're doing this via a for loop, then we would have deleted row number four and we would now be moving on to the next row, which is supposed to be blank as well. But because the data set has moved up, we will have effectively skipped over this next blank line and we don't wanna do that. So the way to avoid this is to start from the bottom and move towards the top. Okay, let's create a reverse for loop. First a new sub, create the worksheet variable and next we'll find the last row of our data set. Since our data set may contain blank rows, the best way to do this is to find the last row using the use range property of the worksheet object. So we'll get the use range property, grab the rows object. We need to provide the index number, which is the count of rows in the use range. And once we are at the last row, we'll grab the row number of that row. Let's declare an iteration variable and now create the reverse for loop. So we're starting from the bottom to the top, which is L row to one. And the way to move backwards is to say step and minus one. Close the loop. Now, as we loop over the data set, for each iteration, we can do something with the current row. In our case, we want to delete the row if all the cells in the row are empty or blank. And how do we check if the cells are empty? We can use the Excel count a function, which counts all the non-blank cells. And if there are only blank cells, then the function will return a zero. So let's write an if statement to check for that. So the way to use an Excel function in VBA is to call the worksheet function object and choose the count a function. And what range are we looking in? Well, we are looking in the entire current row, which is the rows object with the index number i. So if this function returns a zero, then we want to delete the current row. And delete is just a method. Okay, that's it. Let's run the macro, come back to Excel, and all the empty lines have been deleted. This is my preferred way to delete rows, but it's not nearly as fast as special cells method. Let's look at some tips to improve performance. Each time a macro physically interacts with Excel, the screen will flutter. To stop this, we can turn off the screen updating at the start of the macro and turn it back at the end. So at the very start, turn screen updating to false and turn it back on just as we are about to exit the sub. 
And another trick is that if our worksheet has formulas, each time you delete a row, Excel will recalculate all the formulas and this will slow down the operation. So we can set calculation to manual at the start of the macro and turn it back to the default, which is automatic at the very end. So we'll choose calculation, turn it to manual and turn it back to automatic. Awesome. Using the same technique, we can loop over a single column and delete the entire row if a cell in the column is blank. We will use the same scenario as we use for special cells. That is, in the column client ID, we have a few blank cells and we want to delete off these rows. We're checking in column D, which is column 4. So it's the current row and the fourth column. We can still use the count a function or we can directly check if that cell is blank or not. And the way to do it is just check if this is blank. Now this is the simplest way to check if a cell is blank. Alternatively, you could even check whether the length of this cell is zero or not. I'll just leave this as blank for now. Let's run the macro, come to our Excel sheet and the rows have been deleted. And this will work if the cell has a formula which is returning a blank value. If you remember, this condition failed for the special cells method. So this time we're looking in column G and if the formula returns a blank value, then we delete off the row. So in this instance, the row with the blank value will get deleted and the row with all blank values will get deleted as well. Okay. Update the column reference to column G, which is column seven and run the macro and that's run going back to our Excel sheet and both the rows, the completely blank rows and the rows with the cell value blank in column G have been deleted. And that's the video. You can visit my blog site link below to review the full code and explanation. And if you like this style of videos where we deep dive into certain concepts from my long form videos, please do let me know in the comments. And if this video has added some value to you, please do like and subscribe. Thanks and see you in the next one.